This individual, the emperor in reverse, is all about the path of service to self, okay? When he's upright, he's more oriented towards the path of service to others, which in the realm of the emperor would be being protective, being diplomatic, being a nurturer from a masculine point of view, holding boundaries for individuals or, f or holding a safe space for the individuals of the family, of the unit, of the collective, of the empire to be safe and secure so that they as individuals can grow and flourish to their maximum potential. But when the emperor is in reverse here, that can represent someone that is extremely selfish and yes, is in control, but is in control and using that control for their own personal gain, i.e. path of service to self. Hello everyone, welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you all so very much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general collective tarot reading. Yes, please keep in mind this is a general reading, so please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Also, this is a timeless reading. Whenever you're guided to watch this reading and it resonates, then that's the message for you in that moment. Uh, happy Tuesday. I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you're having a good week so far. Um, please make, to, make sure to like, share, comment, and subscribe. If you're new to the channel, welcome. It's very, very nice to meet you. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, make sure to consider doing that, yeah? And if you're enjoying the reading, definitely give it a like. Um, that absolutely helps to, you know, push the reading out for more people to see. Share it with your friends. And also, leave a comment in the description or in the comment section down below. I love hearing from you guys. Let's have a conversation about whatever is going on, yeah? All right, guys, um, I really don't have much to say to start. Actually, I don't really have anything to say to start at all. Uh, so we're just gonna get into it and see what collective message we have for us today, yeah? I'm still working with the Golden Art Nouveau Tarot and I still can't find the box. Oh wait, oh wait, I know where it is. Yep, there it is. Oh. The cats have been sleeping on my table, which means that if anything is left on the table, it gets thrown off the table. This is the deck that we're, this is our main deck for today. And I will be using the after tarot for clarification, yeah? All right, y'all, let's get into it and see what we've got for the collective for today. Here we go. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve their highest good and the highest good of all involved. Please give us clear and accurate representation of the energies in terms of these situations, situationships, romances, relationships, places, and circumstances in which we all need it the most. Thank you so very much, Spirit. All right, y'all. I'm going to give this five shuffles. Here we go. One. For the collective. This is two. This is three. Try that again. Three. This is four. So I um I watched this movie on Netflix last night. It was all about Nickelodeon. This is five. Um, and how Nickelodeon started. And like just like the early days of Nickelodeon, like in my opinion, when Nickelodeon was like really cool. Um, I mean I was born in 1987, so I'm totally a kid of the 90s. And Nickelodeon was one of my favorite channels to watch. Nickelodeon and Disney Channel and ultimately Cartoon Network. But um, the nostalgia 
around Nickelodeon and like the 90s and all that stuff, like freaking Rugrats and um, what were the, the first three? The first three uh, Nickelodeon, the Nicktoons were Rugrats, Doug, and Ren and Stimpy. <laughs> And then there was, oh my god, there was all that. There was Snick, Are You Afraid of the Dark? I mean, like, and I have the all, I have the all that theme song stuck in my head now because TLC did that. And TLC is one of my absolute favorite bands, favorite groups of, like, all time. And just, like, it makes me, it, like, it, I almost, it makes me want to cry sometimes when, like, when I'm thinking back on it. Like, if I could go back to those days where... You know, I was in like elementary school. I mean, not the fact that I want to be back in elementary school because that was fucking hell, but <laughs> um, elementary and middle school. But like those days, like back in the day, like Nickelodeon shit, like all that and all that. I mean, like the nostalgia is real, y'all. Okay, uh, I'm sorry. I, I really wanted to share that with you. I know there are some of you out there that are like right there with me, like, yes, honey. Yeah. Yeah, those are the days. Those are the days. And now we're adults. <laughs> <coughs> anyway. Alright. What do we have for the collective today? What's going on with the collective? What do you want to discuss with the collective today, Spirit? Ooh. Okay, so uh, this is a little troubling. This is a little troubling. At the bottom of the deck, you have the Nine of Pentacles. Um, the first card out is the Tower. All of the cards that have come out here are fall are, have fallen face up, okay? The Tower is the first card out. Uh, and what's troubling about this is this one card. You do have the Three of Swords here, but you have that with the Emperor, and the Emperor is in reverse. And then you have the Six of Cups. Uh, I'm getting with the Emperor, this is a father figure or an authority figure of some sort. I am hearing very clearly a father figure. Um, but it doesn't have to be like your actual father. Um, this could be a person or a situation that, that in which this individual that's rep I'm sorry, I'm looking for chapstick while I'm trying to talk through this and I don't think I have any uh, at my disposal. Um, either, this in either this individual here represented by the emperor, I mean, this could be an Aries, the emperor represent Aries, but that's not, the zodiac sign really is not important here, okay? What I heard when the Emperor came out was a father figure. And either this is literally your father or a grandfather or someone that was a father to you or acted as if or stood in that role as a father. Or this was someone that was like maybe a mentor or someone that advised you or someone that you went to for advice or something like that. But what I'm feeling from this Emperor energy here is this individual is very controlling. This also could be an individual, and I know this, uh, now that I think about it, I know exactly who this may resonate for, um, but this also could be the father of your children. Something like that, okay? This individual is extremely controlling. That's what I get with the emperor in reverse. Now, two things about the emperor being in reverse. First of all, I feel like the emperor is in reverse here because this individual is no longer a part of your life, is no longer needed in your life, um, should not be a part of your life any longer or you don't want them as a part of your life any longer The Emperor is also in reverse because of the fact that he's extremely controlling like this is like other than the fact that this is this could represent someone that used to be a part of your life or someone that you wanted as in your life at one point um, this is the, the the reversal here also represents the negative side of the Emperor so what is the negative side of the emperor? The negative side of the emperor is someone who is extremely controlling. He's a dictator, okay? He's a tyrant. He is an individual that is in control, 
but uses that control to his own personal advantage. For those of you that are over on Patreon with me, uh, in the uh, Divine, the, no, I'm sorry, no, in the Inner Balance Package and the Full Monty, you guys saw the last vlog post that I posted in which in terms or in which we were talking about the path of service to others versus the path of service to self. This individual, the emperor in reverse, is all about the path of service to self, okay? When he's upright, he's in he's in the he's he's more oriented towards the path of service to others, which is in that's in, which would be in the realm of the emperor would be being protective, being um, diplomatic being a nurturer from a masculine point of view, holding boundaries for individuals or, f or holding a safe space for the individuals of the family, of the unit, of the collective, of the empire to be safe and secure so that they as individuals can grow and flourish to their maximum potential. Okay, service to others. But when the emperor is in reverse here, that can represent someone that is extremely selfish and yes, is in control, but is in control and using that control for their own personal gain, not the gain of the collective or the empire or whatnot, whatever, i.e. path of service to self. This is an individual that is in service of the path, is on the path of service to him, him or herself. It doesn't matter the gender, the, the gender, okay? We don't necessarily have to be talking about a man, although I did hear specifically this is a father figure. Okay. Um... If we really want to go deep with it, well, not necessarily go deep with it, but if we really want to pick it apart and split hairs, if you're a woman, okay, this could be you being in this emperor energy in reverse because of what you learn from or what you experienced in terms of a father figure. If you are a woman and you are in this energy, you most likely take after a certain father figure that was very much like this, okay? Whether you, have, whether you are actively choosing to step in that role or whether it's like an inadvertent thing, like you end up embodying these certain principles or whatnot later on in life and you don't even notice it on the surface right away, you know? It's just something that was, was was instilled within you and now all of a sudden, not necessarily all of a sudden, but now it is showing itself. Okay, you have all of this with the Three of Swords and the Six of Cups and then the Tower, all right? At the bottom of the deck is the Nine of Pentacles and the Ace of Swords and the Chariot and the, ooh, and the Queen of Pentacles, the Seven of Pentacles, the Hermit. So, <coughs> what we're talking about here is the end of the association with this individual, this emperor energy, okay? The tower is representing the destruction of the circumstance or the bond between the two of you or the physical circumstances in your life that have you two associated with each other. Now, if this, is the fa if this person is the father of your children, obviously your children aren't going anywhere, okay? You're still going to have to, especially Regar uh, uh, in regards to like how old the child is, uh, if they're still an adolescent, like under 18, if they're still, right, if they're still a child or still legally a child or an adolescent, uh, you obviously still have to associate with the father of their children, un uh, of your children. Un oh shit, hold on a second. Speaking of toxic masculine energy, Orion, got into a fight, was fighting with this one black cat, this raggedy ass looking black cat that's around the area that just attacks him. And they ran off. I couldn't stop anything. But I did get to see him flying from up top, hit the car and like fall on the ground and then disappear. That was beautiful. Can you can you tell how sar how sarcastic I am? Anyway, um, back to <laughs> back to the topic at hand here. Basically, the point is that I because I don't even remember where I was before I paused.
but um, the point here is that the situation is ending. All right. Um, there, what, what I'm getting with the tower here is that there's a lack of belief in reconciling, rectifying. I feel like this is that moment where you finally, someone here is finally uh, realizing that they can't go any further with this person. Um, you have a past with this person, Six of Cups, uh, but now the heartbreak and the pain is outweighing whatever that past was. I feel like in this situation here, this was a situation in which, you know, you tried to hang on or you tried to do what was right. Um, but at this point, what is understood or what's becoming understood is what is right is actually what's best for you. Not keeping this relationship going with this, with this person, not keeping up with the Joneses in this situation. It's about being independent. Nine of Pentacles to the Ace of Swords. You found a sense of sovereignty here. This is at the bottom of the deck. You found a sense of sovereignty. You found a sense of independence. Um, there's victory here with the Ace of Swords, and that victory is because of your of the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding you've come to in this situation, or at least regarding this person or regarding this situation. But there's also victory in you moving forward. The Chariot with the Queen of Pentacles, because. You've ultimately learned Seven of Pentacles. You've learned your worth. You've learned what I'm getting also specifically. Yes, you've learned your worth here. But specifically, what I'm getting with the Queen of Pentacles and the Seven of Pentacles here, you finally figured out how this person operates. And you know exactly what it is they're about and exactly what this situation has been up uh, all along. And now you are, I guess... I mean, this, this phrase is getting cliche at this point, but like you're taking your power back now in a certain sense or you're owning your wisdom is what I'm hearing. You're owning the wisdom of the circumstance. You're owning the, the level of understanding that you've come to. Um, and, and quite frankly, this has helped you learn about yourself. Also, finally, we have the hermit at the bottom of the deck. But not only has it helped you learn about yourself, but uh, you're allowing more of yourself to shine through. So specifically, what the tower represents in this situation is you literally releasing this subject from your life. You're allowing the foundation of the, the foundation of the relationship between you and this emperor energy, you're allowing that to, to crumble. You're allowing that to fall by the wayside. I, I literally feel like I, to a certain extent, in some way, you were like propping this tower up. What I'm seeing in my head now is like, there is this tower that represents, figuratively, that represents the relationship between you and this emperor in reverse. And you were trying, and like the tower was leaning already. So much so like it literally, it like to some, to, to, for some of you, it was to the degree that like, it was already cracked, like it's leaning so much that you could see a crack in the in in part of it, and you can see how it's starting to separate, and it's leaning, 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 and you're standing here holding it, pushing it, trying to keep it up, trying to keep it up, and now you just stepped away, and you're allowing it to fall. In some cases, you're allowing this individual to dig their own grave with their narcissism and their bullshit. And their demands, I just heard. Literally, with this Nine of Pentacles and Ace of Swords, you're like, you're recognizing or realizing that the tower needed to fall a long time ago. And now at this point, you're just standing there like, mm-hmm. You know, I'm kind of, I'm getting a scene from how, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing the scene in the, how Stella got her groove back, where she's standing there smoking the cigarette and the car, she lit the car on fire with all of that guy's clothes. That was Angela Bassett, right? Yeah. That, that scene, that's what I'm seeing right there. This is, that's like, that's how nonchalant you are about this. That's how like, what the fuck ever? Why should I care now? This should have fallen a long time ago. And this person has, this individual that's represented by the, uh, the emperor in reverse here has done nothing but proven it time and time again. The more chances that you gave them 
the more of the benefit of the doubt that you gave them, the more and more they acted like a tyrant. And so you're not giving them any leeway any longer. You're literally allowing them to dig their own grave is what I'm feeling and hearing. All right, um, how do I wanna do this? Clarification? Yeah, let's do that. It'll be easier that way. Uh, yeah, so we're gonna get into clarification, but the reason why I was asking that question is because I wanna talk more about this emperor energy here. Um, but I wanna do it from a different deck. Yeah, so let's get this five shuffles here. So let's get into the clarification. Yeah, this is one. This is two. This is three. Four. And five. All right, so let's talk about the Emperor here. Let's get some clarity on the Emperor in Reverse. Who is this Emperor in Reverse? What is he about? What's the deal? What can you tell us about this Emperor in Reverse, please, Spirit? What can you tell us about this Emperor in Reverse? What can you tell us about the Emperor in Reverse, please, Spirit? Okay, so the biggest thing is that the Emperor in Reverse represents, holy shit, the Emperor in Reverse represents an individual or a time in your life that is no longer relevant to you. It has come to an end and you're taking a leap of faith and moving forward. You have the Fool here. And at the bottom of the deck is the World. So this literally is a situation in which you are well aware that your time with this individual is over, done with. And it's not necessary to move forward with them any longer. It's not necessary to give them any of your time or your energy or attention any longer. I mean, obviously, again, if you have children with this individual and they are not adults yet, then obviously, yes, you still have to associate with them to a certain degree to be a parent, to co-parent, right? Okay. Um, that is, of course, if the person is still a part of your life or is still and has an active role in the child's life. Okay. For others of you, this is just a situation in which like, you know it's done, you know it's over, and you're ready to take a leap of faith. Again, nothing is holding you back any longer. You're not trying to keep up appearance. You're not trying to keep this thing going. You, you're done. Okay, so the biggest reason why the Emperor is in reverse here is because this person is no longer relevant to your life, is no longer a part of your life, or you no longer want to have them in your life, and you're ready to take a leap of faith. you're ready to move forward. In some cases, you already have taken this leap. So, uh, so um, can you give us a little bit more on the Fool then? What do you mean by like, what do you mean? Can you expand on this Fool energy please for the Hermit? Or for the, the Emperor? Can you expand on the Fool energy please? Can you expand on the Fool energy please? Ah, see, the sun. Illumination. Clarity. Truth. Honesty. But also what the sun is representing is being honest with yourself about the situation because you know it's time to let this person go. And in some cases, you've known that for a while, but now you're really ready to accept it, maybe. Either you're really ready to accept it or you're just really ready to move on because what you have here, you have three cards, two of them have fallen face down, but one of them is the uh, Knight of Wands, okay? So this leap of faith, <coughs> maybe not necessarily a leap of faith, but stepping out and starting a brand new cycle, like having ended that old cycle with the world that was at the bottom of the deck before, and now moving forward, having stepped into the next cycle, even if it's just energetically, okay? In an energetic sense, you are ready to move forward, you are moving forward, but this is clarified by the Knight of Wands, which is saying to me that you are really, really ready. 
Like you're really, 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 really ready. Like you are so fucking ready. You've never been so ready for anything in your life. <laughs> okay. You have that with the three of wands and the nine of cups. So your focus here in moving forward in taking this leap of faith, what you are so passionate about in terms of moving forward in this situation is figuring out how it is you are going to be happy in the future. That's what you have your sights set on, okay? And this is not, this is also a focus, especially with this independence energy here, the Nine of Pentacles and the Ace of Swords. This is also a focus on long-term goals, long-term happiness, and doing what is right for you, and not letting some sort of narcissistic piece of shit hold you back like this any longer ever again. This is more than just the Three of Wands and the Nine of Cups is saying, this is more than just moving on from this certain individual and starting the next chapter in your life. This is about taking all of the ways that this person may have held you back or this type of energy or this type of circumstance may have held you back and may have kept you from pursuing exactly what it is that makes you happy or would make you happy. You're going after that now. You're not allowed, like this is a big, big lesson. You're not, you're not going to allow anything like this to ever hold you back in this way again, to ever hurt you in this way again. It's so much more than just this individual, okay? Yes, this individual has a lot to do with it, don't get me wrong, but at this point in how you're moving forward, it's so much more than that. And that's also the illumination that the sun is bringing to you, okay? So it's not just victory, it's not just happiness, it's not just, you know, I can see clearly now the rain is gone, like the skies have cleared and the sun is shining. No, the sun is also bringing illumination in ways, in terms of just how much you have been held back, how you have been blocked, how you have been held hostage, not just by this individual, but this type of energy, okay? This controlling energy, okay. Let's talk about the tower then. The tower. What is the tower here for the collective? Can you just expand on the tower for us, please, Spirit? What is the tower? You're fucking kidding me. The cards is the cards are straight up just like, look, bitch, I said what I said. At the bottom of the deck is the devil. I mean, look, and the first card out to clarify the tower is the fucking tower. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> but check it out. You have the tower here. You also have that with the Ten of Pentacles. This was a family situation for some of you. And... What kept you guys together was the physicality of it, whether that be the finances, uh, the fact that you actually have children together, um, some sort of physical circumstance that forced you guys to stay together at some point or to some degree or to some extent. But also the Ten of Pentacles is representing the lesson has been learned. The lesson has been completed. The cycle is complete. You are ready to graduate from this lesson and move on. And what did you learn? You learned the lesson of toxicity, devil energy, codependency, and addiction. And now you get to stand on your own. You have the devil with the nine of pentacles yet again, then back to the seven of pentacles, you see. Where is the seven of pentacles here? Is underneath the queen of pentacles. Instead of allowing yourself to be attached to this individual and or this situation, the devil, through, le through a level of codependency, yeah, okay, um, you've learned a very valuable lesson. And now you are standing on your own, the nine of pentacles. And the reason why you're standing on your own is because you've actually really learned seven of pentacles. You really, really get it. The seven of pentacles can either be a situation or an energy or circumstances in a circumstance in which you 
either are floundering around, cycling through, doing the same things over and over and over again, but expecting somehow for it to turn out differently, or it's the exact opposite. You have actually learned or you can recognize that what it is you're doing in this situation is not providing you with the results that you desire and thus you change your approach. You either change your approach or you change the circumstance situation altogether. In some cases, if you really, if you're really deep in it, the seven of pentacles can also represent that moment where you say to yourself, I don't want this at all anymore. And you completely scrap the whole thing and start a, start a new, start from scratch, start fresh. But the thing about it is if you find yourself in that energy of the seven of pentacles, if you find yourself in that version of the seven of pentacles, it's very similar to the page of pentacles. It's not like you're starting over completely naive, completely unaware without any knowledge. No, you're taking, a, you're taking everything that you learned with you from that previous circumstance and you're applying it to this next situation, but you are in fact starting over. Also, if you're starting over from this point, you have a greater idea of what it is you want now versus when you started last time. And that's a better, that's even more of um, a boon. That's even more um, ammunition for you to move forward. That works even more in your favor, yeah? You see the devil for who or what it truly is at this point. And that's why, that's why this situation is over and done with. That's why you're allowing the tower to fall. That's why you're not trying to prep this up any longer. Okay, one last thing that I do want to talk about, I do want to clarify, we're going to talk about this Three of Swords then. What would you like to say about the Three of Swords spirit? Can What can you clarify or expand on with the Three of Swords? What is the Three of Swords for the collective here? What is the Three of Swords for the collective here, please, spirit? <laughs> At the bottom of the deck is the sun again. The first card out to clarify the Three of Swords is the Three of Cups. Now... You can look at this as there was some sort of third party energy involved here. That makes sense. In some, in some of the circumstances that I'm channeling for, that I'm picking up on, there was in fact a third party. But that third party feels like this, other, like this emperor's mother. That type of energy, that type of meddling energy. It's not like, oh, there was a, some side chick or some side dick, right? <laughs> no, it feels like a family member. And it also, um, I just heard entitlement. So it, it could be, this family member could be expressing some sort of extreme form of entitlement like we were talking about yesterday. Uh, I'm literally getting a mother. I'm seeing a feminine figure. An older woman, that's what I'm seeing. That's what this third party energy could be. And if it's not a mother, it's something like that. Again, I, I mean, this is a general reading, you guys. So this, this, this could be anything. But the strongest thing that I'm getting is not that there was some side piece that was involved. There were other people involved that were of family or friend or some sort of colleague type energy. Okay. Three of Cups. Uh, you have a number of cards here. So also, in terms of the Three of Swords, in a, on, in a, on a much happier or lighter note, the Three of Cups represents celebration. Because you have this with the Knight of Swords, the Queen of Wands, and the Star, but the Star is in reverse. So what this is saying to me is that you recognize that this was not the wish fulfillment that you desire, or at the very least, this was not a path that you were willing to just blindly follow any longer. You were not, you lost faith in this path, but it's not about losing faith. It's about recognizing that you didn't know, you were no longer, it was no longer necessary or you were no longer required to 
put your faith in this situation any longer. This literally feels like, especially with the sun at the bottom of the deck here, this literally feels like you wised up and recognized how foolish it was of you to continue to put faith in this situation. Because there's no faith to be had. Because this situation was under the dictatorship or the control of this emperor in reverse and there is no winning when it comes to that. I'm really surprised the Five of Swords has not come out here now that I'm talking through it in this way. There was no winning when it comes to the Emperor in Reverse because oftentimes it's one of two things. Either they're gonna do whatever it is that they want to do and they're going to, regardless as to what you have to say about it and or they're going to get exactly what it is that they want because they have the power to do so. There is no winning when it comes to the to the emperor in reverse, okay? But that's where you recognize, that's what you recognize, the star in reverse and the sun. And at the very least, the star in reverse is representing not willing, not being willing to walk this path any longer. Because remember, the star, yes, represents healing, it represents faith, but it also represents moving forward, following some sort of guidance system towards an ultimate goal, which tends to be some sort of wish fulfillment, right? But as you're moving down that path with the star, things are not clear. You don't know how it is you're going to get there. You don't necessarily know where it is you're going. And you don't know how long it's going to take. That's where the faith element comes in. But you recognize that it was foolish to continue putting faith into this situation. Because ultimately, you were never going to get anything that you actually wanted out of this. So instead, you got into alignment with what it is you truly want. Queen of Wands. And you fought back or you are fighting back, Knight of Swords. Hence why we have this double tower. And you fighting back doesn't necessarily mean that you're coming up there, you know, fisticuffs and like, you know, ready to like knock, roll, like, like chop some heads off or anything like that, or like slice somebody up with your verbs, with your verbiage. This fighting back could literally look like you standing back here and refusing to associate refusing to give in, refusing to give this person or this situation any more leeway, any more of your time, attention, or energy. And that in and of, in and of itself, it very much is a victory because unfortunately for this emperor in reverse, and that's where the path of least, of the, that's where, this is where the path of um, service to self kind of has its downfall. Okay, and this I'm getting from this path of service to self versus the path of service to others. If you are reading the, the law or if you have read the law of one, then you recognize that because that's part of what I'm kind of I'm reading that right now. And, that, and this is all making sense. But this is where the path of service to self has its downfall because the path of service to self is fully dependent on keeping other individuals under your control manipulating them into doing whatever, whatever it is you want or need them to do so that you can get what it is that you want. So if you can't, have, if you can't keep people under control any longer or you can't keep them under your thumb or you can't keep them manipulated into rolling with you or keeping up with your agenda, following through with your agenda, your vision, then you're fucked. Because that's how that works. That's how the path of service to self works. Hi, Orion. Hold on, you guys. He's okay. He's not hurt. Probably just shocked, but he's okay. Um, so then, okay, so you've got the path of service to self. And as long as you have people under your control, you get whatever you want. But once people start to wise up, and recognize what it is you're doing to them and start to stand on their own, stand in their sovereignty and take their power back, you're screwed because now you have no more lackeys. But then you have the path of service to others in which we all come together on the common goal of we want to be of service. And so we all put our power together and before you know it, you've got this massive collective of people that are all working towards being there for each other and working towards the same goal. No path, either the path of service to self or the path of service to others, neither path is better than the other. 
is more important than the other. They both serve a purpose. And that purpose is, and that purpose serves source. Whether you, it doesn't matter what path you're on. But I will say, the path of service itself does have a cap. Because, and this is a topic of discussion that we can get into if you guys are interested, we can get into this at another time. But these paths help us to work our way up the vibrational ladder, the dimensional ladder, right? But when you're walking the path of service to self, you are capped at the sixth dimension. You cannot go past the sixth dimension because once you get past the sixth dimension, you have to be collectively oriented. You can't go past, past the sixth of that path, okay? You're literally capped. And then once you wise up, wake up and figure it out, then you gotta double back. Gotta at least go back to either the third dimension. You no, know, you kind of have to go back to the third dimension. Because those who orient themselves towards the path of service to self have rejected the lesson of love. So you're either going back to the fourth dimension where, you, where we begin to start learning the lesson of love, that's the heart chakra, or you go back to the third. And quite frankly, I kind of feel like you're most likely gonna go back to the third first. It depends, it really just depends. But I mean, this is a topic of conversation that we can get into at another time if you guys are interested. If you're interested in it, let me know in the comments section down below, okay? My Patreoners, if you guys are interested in this, let me know, we can discuss this. Or if you guys are, are wanting here on YouTube, you wanna talk about it, we can discuss this, let me know. But I need you to let me know, okay? Don't like, like if you, whatever, all right. Anyway, I think you guys get what I'm saying at this point. Okay, that's enough clarification, I believe. Yeah, we're 40 minutes in. Let's, uh, let's close this reading out. I wanna stick with the Gods and Titans deck right now. I, I feel like I'm gonna be using this deck a lot. Hi, Orion. Um, yeah, I, I really, I'm really vibing with this deck right now. Okay, but uh, since we're talking about all this masculine energy here, I wanna, I definitely wanna get, I definitely am feeling called to get our closing oracle guidance from the Gods and Titans deck because this is going to talk to, speak to us from a masculine point of view, but from a balanced and positive point of view, okay? So I'm gonna give this five shuffles to close out our reading, yeah? This is one. This is two. This is three. Closing Oracle Guidance, please, Spirit. This is four. And also, I, I, I also want to use this deck. I feel like this is coming from the Masculine Collective but I feel a very strong desire, heartfelt desire, to redeem masculine energies because this individual, this emperor in reverse, is not representative of the masculine collective. It is he or she is representative of twisted, toxic, damaged masculine energy that needs healing, okay? This is not representative of the, mas of the core of the masculine collective, period. So don't get it twisted, yeah? <laughs> this is four. I think, whatever, this is five. Alrighty, kids. Let's close out this reading here. Closing Oracle Guidance, please, Spirit. In terms of this reading, take this one. That's enough. And then you give me two more. What do you want me to do? They want me to read all of them. All right, they gave me three. The first card out is, where is that crystal? I don't know, 
doesn't matter. The first card out is Nuada. Perfection. And then we have Alpush, Fear. And then we have Hypnos, Sleep. All right. So I want to read uh, Nuada first. Oh, wait. Alphabetical order. All right. Okay. Nuada, perfection. Love and appreciate your uniqueness and your imperfections. Question the costs of chasing perfection. Delight in who you are. The story of Nuada is a very ancient one that has woven itself into different themes and variants over different times and places. One thing that stays constant is his exploration of suitability and, per and perfection. Nuada is the king of Aaron, one of the heroic uh, Tuatha de Danan, de Danan, which was one of the mystical or mythical ancient races of Ireland. According to myth, these early Celtic times were far from peaceful, with bloody battles being waged continuously. During one of the major battles, the Danans, led by Nuada and his sword of invincibility, defeated the fear fearbogs. Fearbogs. <laughs> Fierbogs. Yes. The fighting was so bloody and fierce, though, that Nuada lost his right hand. This was a disaster for Nuada, as there was an ancient law that precluded anyone who was not, quote, whole from being king. His mutilation lost him his rule, even though he was a victorious, just, and benevolent leader. The Donans then chose Bress as their leader. Bress although a skilled fighter, had little of Nuada's wisdom and fairness. The kingdom soon felt the effects of this discordant king. Nuada's brother, the physician Dion uh, Sept, fashioned a magical silver hand to replace the one Nuada had lost. Not only functional, this silver was beautiful too. Nuada became Nuada Ergeldam. I'm sorry, I'm trying my best, but it's Nuada of the Silver Hand, again, worthy among his people, and Brest stepped down from the throne. Today, more than ever, we chase perfection, but what is it really? We often see external perfection as necessary to success. The quest for perfect beauty and a perfect body has thrown us towards a pred uh, predilection for worrying about our external looks, quote, enhancing ourselves with too much makeup or even surgery and obsessing over dieting and unhealthy eating habits. When did the fact that we have healthy, strong, functional bodies become not enough? We are born with everything we need to be what we are meant to be. We are born, we are born imperfectly perfect. Our uniqueness has a reason. Nuada reminds us that to be perfect, we need not pursue some unattainable, unattainable or false ideal. Perfection is a subjective judgment and not an objective reality. In Nuada's case, he is the best leader. His missing hand did not take away from his great leadership qualities. The shadow side of Nuada is, says, many people state that there are perfectionists, that they are perfectionists, like it is a badge of honor. While trying to be excellent and the best we can be is, admi as, is admirable, striving for an unattainable illusion is tiring and damaging. Remember, should Nuwada show, show his hand to you, consider that you may well be good enough already. Alpuch, fear. Oh, there you are. Examine your fears. What is there to be afraid of? You are being asked to confront what frightens you. Wait a second. I'm sorry. Hold on a second, you guys. Because I just noticed something from this book. This is really interesting. Okay, so... Um, in... Instead of a shadow side, and this is what made me stop, instead of a shadow side, Alpooch has a light side. Now that makes sense because fear is a dark or shadow aspect. Okay, cool. Alpooch is the Mayan god of the dead. 
While most Crete cultures have a god ruling over the underworld or death itself, the Mayans had a number of gods ruling over nine levels of hell, and Alpuch was the most feared. Alpuch doesn't just show up quietly for you or even wait patiently for your death. He hunts you. Normally pictures, I'm sorry, normally pictured as a skeleton or with bones on his head and wearing bells, he is the most senior of all Mayan death demons. Living on the lowest level of the underworld, known as Myth Mitnal, Alpuch rises up and stalks city streets at night looking for his next victim. The Mayans feared death and they were always aware that Alpuch could indeed be waiting around the next bend to take them. In fact, it is said that few people went out on the streets at night because it was difficult to see what lie ahead. They especially avoided going out at night if there was a sickness within their homes, as they greatly feared death through sickness. There is only one way to scare Alpuch away, and that is to scream and shout. Testimonies from the Spanish conquistadors include passages describing the loud wailing and screaming of the families of those who were extremely sick or had passed. It seemed strange to the Spanish that, these, that this noise didn't extend into daylight hours. What they didn't realize was the loud protestations were unnecessarily, were, were unnecessary to scare away the terrifying Alpuch when the sun was up. Should Alpuch come ringing his bells, fear may be in your consciousness. What are you most afraid of? Are you afraid of being judged by others? Are you worrying about tests, grades, and classes? Do you fear being ridiculed or not measuring up? Examine if your fear is real, if it is something that can truly hurt you, something that you have control over and can change, or something that you can simply re-examine and let go of if need be. What can you do to break the hold that fear has on you? All these questions must be considered and answered if you are to move forward with ease and peace. The light side of Alpuch says, death is something people are often afraid of. Sometimes we simply fear the death of things, also known as change. Yet death and change are, un are universal. Alpuch's energy is very much about the fear surrounding change and the hold it has upon us. We fear what we feel powerless to change. Standing strong against any fear, feeling it, shining the light on it, and confronting it is a lesson from Alpuch's legend that we can learn from. It is far better to act in knowledge rather than wait for fear to hunt you down. When we know what we fear, we can confront it instead of refusing to think about it and hiding from it in every way. Finally, we have Hypnos, sleep. And what I'm getting from these three cards are, is that these, what we're talking about here, from perfection to fear to sleep, this is what this individual, the emperor in reverse, seems to be under. The energies that the emperor in reverse seems to be under. An individual in your life that is represented as the emperor in reverse, this is their biggest, these are their biggest challenges. This is who they are. This is where they are. This is part of their energetic makeup, whether it be all three of these energies or maybe one or two of them, whatever. Take it as it resonates. Whatever resonates the most for you in terms of individual, this individual, understanding this individual, understanding where they are in their experience, in their lives, maybe in their childhood is what I'm hearing, because this could be um, things that are, were, are deeply rooted within their childhood that have them in this emperor in reverse state. This is not making excuses for them. This feels like this is meant to help you put, get an understanding of where this individual is so that you can let go. Hypnos, sleep. Being aware and spiritually awake is vital to developing our highest potential. Allowing full rest is vital to self-care. But what I'm getting with hypnos or sleep in this situation is that this person, this emperor in reverse, is very much dead ass asleep. Hypnos, the Greek god of sleep, was born from Nyx, night, the dark mother. Artists often picture him hand in hand with his twin brother, Than Thanatos, 
or death. Often the brothers shadow each other in their work. Hypnos is generally seen as a benevolent and relief-inducing deity and is honored for his place in well-being and health. Hera once bribed him to practice his arts on Zeus so that she could torment the hero Hercules, but this was about as rebellious as Hypnos gets. Our world is busier than ever, and sometimes getting a decent night's sleep can be difficult. You can always call upon Hypnos to assist you in times where stress, study, worry, or insomnia has robbed you of your sleep. In, the mo in our modern lives, there is another time that Hypnos' favor could, should be courted. It's anesthesia. If you are undergoing an operation, why not give a little liberation to Hypnos prior to, oh, I'm sorry, a little libation to Hypnos prior to the procedure, as it is Hypnos who will be guiding the hand of your anesthesiologist as he or she artfully sends you into a painless sleep. The shadow side of Hypnos, it says, if Hypnos isn't granting you his gift of rest and uninterrupted sleep, it will have substantial effects on your body and mind. Those who can't sleep experience negative effects relating not only to mental ability, but also to metabolism, weight, concentration, decision-making, and vision. Our bodies need to sleep and dream in order for our brains to rest and process things accurately. On the other hand, if you are sleeping too much, disconnecting from the world by slipping away with hypnos, you may well be depressed or lacking in energy, both situations in which you should reach out for help. We also want to be able, or I'm sorry, you also want to be sure you aren't sleeping through things that may be important. We all enjoy sleeping in and catching up on, at, on sleep at times, but we don't want to let it cause us to miss out on things happening in the waking world. Spiritually speaking, if we remain asleep to our potential, our reality, and our purposeful path, it benefits no one. Awaken, dear sleeper. I'm going to leave it there. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. I definitely did not intend for this to be an hour long video, but here we are. I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee very, very soon. Yeah? Excellent. Take care. Bye. <laughs>